Welcome back, Seth Bling here. I'm gonna push this button, and sometime in about 24 and a half years, this TNT is gonna ignite. Now I mean real lifetime, I'm talking about the year 2044 or thereabouts. This is a submission for the 5x5 timer challenge by these Twitter users, El Craftu, also known as El Crapo on my previous video about the 5x5 timer challenge, and also Valas52859196. It lasts 24 and a half years. This is really cool. It uses some new tech that I haven't seen before. Uh, basically a, a new design for an etho clock that's a, quite a bit more compact. And <clears throat> well, I'll go over how it works. So uh, first of all, I'll just show you the hoppers uh, and the droppers and where they're pointed. So there, there's two hoppers right here. They're pointed at each other. Um, they are very slowly, well, not that slowly, they're, they're basically draining items back and forth. That's the Etho hopper hopper clock. Uh, over here, we also have two droppers that are pointed at each other. These aren't exactly like dueling droppers or anything. They're, uh, but they work a lot like this, where it drains from this side into this side completely, and then it'll drain from this side into this side completely. And then the actual TNT is ignited by the contents of this dropper. When this dropper empties out, then the TNT will go off. This dropper has a couple of other droppers feeding into it as well as this hopper. So all of those feed into this dropper. Okay, so to actually show you the mechanics of how it works though, let's, I've, uh, I've, I've copied and pasted the whole thing and I've replaced all of the stacks of redstone blocks with just minecarts with hoppers. So these are, um, these are items that don't stack and it'll allow the whole thing to operate a lot faster. So I'll get it started. First of all, you'll notice that uh, how it starts is there's this redstone torch that's on, even though it's supposed to be off. You know, it's, the block is being powered. Um, the way I did that is, uh, is, is like a redstone bud. And so the way you, the way you do it is, is like this. Uh, you basically have a, a piston push a block. Uh, so, so, so right now, Oh, in fact, wow. Okay, no. <laughs> yeah, so this, this torch is on uh, because it's not being powered. Uh, and then you push this block to cut off this redstone line, break this dust, and you can just break everything else around here. And now you can see we've got this this redstone torch bud. And if you update it at all, it'll... Uh... And so that's how, that's how the thing starts. The, the button here causes a block update to this torch and turns it off. And then that allows the items to flow freely between these two hoppers. Now, this is a very clever mechanism. Um, I've seen some things sort of like it, but uh, this is sort of like a special case of an etho clock for if you, if you want the hoppers to be completely full. And so this is the part that I haven't really seen before. I like to call it an all or nothing flip-flop. So, Here's the, here's the actual, just, just the etho clock uh, on its own. And you can see it pulsing back and forth. These have the hoppers with minecarts, so it's going relatively quickly. It would go a lot slower if these were obviously full stacks of items. But uh, it uses, so, so this is the all or nothing flip-flop. So the way it works is right now this redstone torch is sort of blocking this comparator from turning on. So if it receives anything less than a full signal, that comparator won't turn on and the, the redstone lamp here, which indicates if the comparator is on, also won't turn on. So anything in here is not gonna cause it to turn on unless you put it right here and it gives it full power, in which case that will turn on. And now it's not gonna turn off until you completely remove all power to that comparator. It can't have any power going to it at all. Notice the, that lamp is still on. And so that's why I call it the all or nothing. So there's no signal now and it'll turn back off and we can't turn it back on again unless we give it full power. And so basically instead of reading the, the output of two hoppers, you just read the output of one hopper. And when it's empty, this flip-flop will turn off. And when it's full, this flip-flop will turn on. And so that, depending on whether it's on or off, one of these two hoppers is gonna be powered and unable to deliver items and uh, yeah, it's really clever. It only works this way if you plan on having the hoppers be completely full, one of the hoppers be completely full. But, uh, and then also it has to be able to be completely empty. So that's what's going on uh, with these blocks. 
And over here, we actually have another copy of that all or nothing flip-flop. And so that's, um, that's what, is, what allows the, the items in these droppers to flow back and forth. So currently this dropper is emptying out. So the, the right dropper is emptying into the left dropper. Every time this, this etho clock uh, pulses, we get one more item in the left dropper. And then once this dropper is full, this flip-flop is going to toggle and it's going to start going the other way. And the way that that works is, well, we can see it here. Yep. So it's going the other way now. It's draining back into this dropper. So the way that that works is every time this etho clock pulses, we get a redstone signal into this dropper, which causes it to drop an item into the other one. And every time this redstone line turns on or off, then this observer will pulse and it'll power this dropper. So what we end up with is this one gets triggered every single time the etho clock goes off. This one gets triggered twice every time the etho clock goes off because it pulses on and off. Uh, but since we have this all or nothing flip-flop, sometimes basically when we want to drain items from this dropper, uh, or sorry, from this dropper, yeah, when we want to drain items, no, <laughs> from this dropper to this dropper, this power is on. And so because this power is on, even though this observer is pulsing twice per, per clock cycle, uh, this dropper is never going to drop anything. And so this one is allowed to dispense all of its items into this dropper. Now, once this line turns off, um, this, this dropper on the left wins the race because it gets pulsed twice per clock cycle as opposed to only once per clock cycle. So it goes, yeah, <laughs> it goes from right to left, then from left to right, right until, in, until it's empty in each case. Now, uh, whenever uh, this goes through a full cycle, all of the items drain from right to left and all of the items drain from left to right, we get, uh, we get this comparator turning on once per full cycle, which, which will dispense an item from this dropper. And once this dropper completely empties, uh, this comparator will turn off, that'll provide an update to this observer, which will trigger the TNT. And this dropper is being fed by this dropper and this dropper and this hopper. Um, this hopter is actually pretty much empty already. Um, and, uh, and, and so this dropper and this dropper are getting, both getting powered by this circuit here. And well, also this one, but, uh, yeah, so, so we have to wait until this dropper is completely empty before, uh, before the TNT will, will explode. So this little diagram circuit <laughs> or basically less full copy gives us a really good uh, tool for analysis. Uh, let's check on the progress over here. So this has definitely gone off a few times, which means we should see a few items. We see one item in this dropper. <laughs> okay, so this has had one full clock cycle so far. So this is about, uh, should be about four minutes. It's about how long it takes for an etho clock to pulse uh, a one full clock cycle. So if this one takes four minutes, uh, we have nine stacks of 64 that have to go fully back and forth. This takes a little over three days to do that. So, so this thing is going to undergo one full cycle every three days. And then we have, let's see, 27 plus five. We have 32 stacks of redstone, uh, uh, redstone blocks that's going to be dropped out. So every three days we drop out a single redstone block and we have 32 stacks that need to be dropped out. And that is how we end up with 24 and a half years of delay. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> that's a quarter century almost. Um, so that's how that works. Once again, I need to give full credit. I didn't do any of the work on this. El Craftu and Valiz 5285916. Um, it was mostly El Craftu. He, he's the one who came up with the with this design for the Etho clock which is really nice for the five by five challenge since it fits into five blocks wide and only, you know, two blocks this way. Um, and it also is, works with the, uh, the hoppers, which is nice. So, so, uh, credit to them. Um, also, uh, oh yeah. And then Val has, uh, sort of figured out how to fit in a couple extra of these droppers, which provides an extra reservoir for the final dropper here. And, uh, and so that's, that was, that was how that came about. There is the potential for more. Now this one I've had trouble getting to work consistently. It works uh, uh, based on 
the um, one of the principles I showed yesterday. Uh, I was trying to show you guys this thing over here. If you remember from the five by five, five by five timer video, the the one where I explained how the the challenge works. Um, I had trouble getting this to work consistently. It could work if I placed it, but it didn't work if I pushed a piston. Uh, so I couldn't get this to work at all, except when I reloaded the world, um, it did start working. We'll see. We'll see if it works. So here I, I just have diamonds hose in here. Again, these are just non-stackable items. You would use actual full stacks of like a redstone block or whatever. But um, so here, this is like a slow etho clock. And it's slow because we have this observer constantly pulsing one half of the um, one half of the etho clock, one of the droppers. And so instead of like fully powering one, it's basically like fighting hoppers uh, or dueling hoppers. And so we can see them. This is like slowly filling up. Once it gets full, it's going to start draining the other direction. With uh, with full stacks of redstone blocks, this takes uh, something like twenty something minutes, I think. That's what that's what I've been told. This this uh, this pair of hoppers, a full clock cycle is like twenty minutes, which is about five times as long as a normal ether clock. And then the rest of it's very similar to what we already saw. We have uh, we have this pair of uh, droppers. Um, currently, this one's unloading into the other one. I think at every every like clock cycle of the etho clock. Um, if we wait a few seconds, we'll probably see that. Oh, we got, we caught it on the wrong side of the cycle. Anyway, you can just believe me. There's two droppers facing each other, and they do that. And uh, again, we have the all or nothing flip flop here, which toggles which direction they're going. This is the exact same principle as as before. Okay, I think another item. Yeah, another item made its way <laughs> from left to right. So, um, and then and then we only have a single uh, dropper here. This is what triggers the TNT output, which the TNT would be right there. It's actually. Oh, whoops. <laughs> uh, oh, whatever. I shouldn't blow anything up. That's fine. Uh, yeah, that TNT is supposed to be there before you. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, it's no, it's supposed to be here. <laughs> yeah, I put it in the wrong place. There we go. Anyway, so so when this dropper empties out, um, this uh, this comparator will turn off and trigger the TNT. And so yeah, once again, the hopper has a twenty minute clock cycle. Then you have uh, you have these which take forever to fully pass the items back and forth, and they very very slowly every uh, okay quick math like fifteen days probably will trigger a drop out of this one, which would be full of nine stacks of you know, blocks or whatever. And only once this depletes will, will the TNT go off. Um, so the total time on this, oh, I just knocked down. Anyway, it was like uh, 48.23 years. <laughs> uh, but I don't know if it works consistently. Uh, it only worked for me after reloading. I guess that's probably good enough. But uh, I think some more research needs to be done on what, what makes this work consistently or not. But it does seem to be going consistently now. Man, this one's... Oh, actually, we might actually... We'll probably see this one drop in a second. I was going to end the video, but there we go. <laughs> so the one of the nine items out of this just dropped out. But of course, it, if these were full stacks, it'd take 64 times as long. And this would also take 64 times as long. And this would also take 64 times as long. So this is a useful model for just like seeing seeing it in action without waiting years, <laughs> but uh, yeah, 48.23 years is, is the uh, is the time for this one. Wow. I bet there's still more improvements to be made. I bet there are, but we'll see. Only time will tell. Only time will tell. That is, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.